Hello and welcome to this lecture on biological risk management. My name is Kenneth and I am from University Malaysia Sabah. Today I will be introducing you to the principles, concepts and practices of biological risk management. We will be looking at the various biological agents such as viruses, bacteria, fungi, yeast and other subviral particles which pose a significant risk to human health and safety. We will be considering the various risks which are posed by biological agents. And we will be learning how to manage the risks associated with biological agents. The concept of biological risk management faces many challenges. For instance, tourism, trade and urbanization have both led to the movement of populations across the globe as well as populations which live in high densities. In the event of a pandemic, this can lead to transmission of the biological agent across human subjects. In addition to this, human genetics and the susceptibility of certain human genotypes to certain pathogens is also an issue which must be considered in the context of biological risk management. Biotechnology and bioterrorism both add another dimension to biological risk management as pathogens can be weaponized for applications in bioterrorism. The implications of biological risk management are many. For instance, good biological risk management can facilitate the identification of index cases for patient zero and the contact tracing can also facilitate the identification of the possible routes of transmission in the case of an epidemic or a pandemic. Biological risk managers are challenged by many different factors today. Pathogens are displaying increased virulence. Their host range has expanded and they can now cross multiple hosts. Genetic instability is another factor which complicates diagnostics and detection. Transmissibility across multiple hosts is another factor which must be taken into account and the emergence of multi-drug resistant phenotypes adds to the complication of biological risk management. This is an example of an experiment which utilizes a genetic engineering protocol to modify human embryos. New biological processes such as this one pose new risks as we enter into the region of the unknown. Sound experimentation and scientific research is essential for the development of vaccines and drugs which can be used to combat biological agents. However, there are several laboratory techniques which can increase the risk posed by a biological agent. This includes the transport of biological specimens across different regions of the world or even between laboratories. The storage and cataloging of biological specimens is essential in terms of bio-risk management as, in, as well as in terms of biosecurity management. The isolation of biological components such as proteins, DNA and RNA can pose additional risks as many of these biological components may be virulent 
in their native form. Sample processing, which involves PCR, ELISA, and electrophoresis, can give rise to aerosols, which can pose a risk to the laboratory operator as well as to the community if released or if there is a breach of containment. Microscopic examination and preparation of samples for microscopic examination can also pose risks to the operator. The culture of biological agents, viruses, bacteria, prions, and mycoplasma increases the level of risk. Vaccine development is also another laboratory technique which is essential to science but can pose biological risks. Biorisk managers look at biological risk management in terms of biosafety and biosecurity. When there is an unintentional release of a biological agent from a laboratory, which may be the result of a breach of containment, a loss, for instance, of the biological barriers such as HEPA filters, the risk is perceived in terms of its biosafety. However, if there is an intentional release via bioterrorism, bio-risk management shifts into biosecurity. We have to look at biological risks in terms of the likelihood and consequence of release or exposure to a biological agent. We need to ask several questions such as Is the biological agent harmful to a healthy adult human being? What is the severity in the case of an infection? We look at it in terms of morbidity, mortality and transmissibility. Risk for biological risk managers is measured in terms of likelihood and consequence. Any microorganism, including those which have been genetically modified, cell cultures and endoparasites, which may be able to provoke any infection, allergy or symptoms of toxicity in humans, are considered biological agents. Prions are included in this category. The Public Health Agency of Canada has an online biological agent pathogen safety data sheet which is very useful in identifying pathogens and the risk groups with which they are associated. When we look at biological risk management, we have to consider the implications to the laboratory. Biorisk management entails a significant cost as well as training of personnel. However, biological risk management is essential as a matter of principle. It also reinforces sound biological research. When we adopt biological risk management, we also comply with universally accepted norms and standards. It also comp lies with the legal necessity such as occupational safety and health standards. We also need to look at the economic reality because a single breach of containment and the subsequent exposure of the community to a biological agent can have a significant risk on the economy of that particular region. It all comes down to being sorry rather than being safe. What we mean to say in this slide is that biological risk management is essential in order to comply with the norms and practices required of good biological research. Now when you begin to initiate bio-risk management at your specific institution or laboratory, the apex management holds the key to the initiation, inculcation, 
and implementation of effective fire risk management. And this constitutes the administrative control or the apex of the controls in biological risk management. Biorisk managers refer to various guidelines. These can include the Laboratory Biosafety Manual, the European Com Committee of Standard for Standardization, and the World Health Organization Biosafety in Microbiological and Biomedical Laboratories Manuals. The implementation of biological risk management begins at the level of the management who consults with the relevant experts and implements bio-risk management procedures and protocols via the biosafety officer, the facility managers, and the principal investigators and their teams. This constitutes the Institutional Biosafety Committee. Biosafety management is defined as a description of the containment principles, technologies and practices that are implemented to prevent the unintentional exposure to biological agents and toxins or their accidental release.